In this video, I want to illustrate how we can use rejection sampling to sample from an even less usual sort of PDF probability density function than that which we considered before. So just remember that rejection sampling is a way of generating independent samples from a given distribution. And I now want to illustrate how we can use rejection sampling to produce random samples from a distribution which is uniform, it's a continuous distribution which is uniform within the boundaries of a circle C. So the idea here is that we have some sort of circular domain and we want to produce samples uniformly at random within that radius. And so we assume that the radius of the circle is given by some distance r and so we can write down what the PDF looks like. If we imagine we've got an X coordinate and a Y coordinate, then the PDF is equal to zero if the radial distance of that point from the origin is greater than R and it's equal to one over pi R squared if otherwise. And so the reason we've got this particular constant here is such that the area of the circle is pi r squared, and hence this means that we're dealing with a valid probability density. So how can we use rejection sampling here? Well, this is a fairly well-known problem, and the solution to it is what you do is you put your circle within some square bounding box, such that the square only touches the circle at four points. Importantly, the boundaries of the square do not cross the boundaries of the circle. And obviously these four points should be symmetric, it's just the way of drawing it. And we might situate our coordinate system such that the origin of the coordinate system is at the center of the circle. And we imagine that we've got a kind of y-axis which is going up here and an x-axis which is going along here. So that's the sort of coordinates that I was referring to. So the idea here is that we could generate some xi and some yi by sampling from a uniform distribution between minus r and r. Then if we consider these xi, yi as pairs, then these coordinates xi, yi will lie somewhere within the boundaries of our square. Then what we do is we generate some zi, which is uniformly distributed between 0 and 1 over pi r squared. And we know that this is a sensible upper bound for our second rejection sample parameter, since the maximum value of the probability density is 1 over pi r squared. So the idea is that in each iteration of our algorithm, we firstly independently sample some xi and some yi by independently sampling from a uniform distribution between minus r and r. Then we independently sample some zi from a uniform distribution between zero and one over pi r squared. Then what we do is we compare the value of zi with the corresponding probability density at that particular point. And if zi is greater than the probability density, then we reject xi and yi as a sample. Else, what we do is we accept xi and yi as a sample from our distribution. So this seems like a fairly complicated way of doing quite a simple thing. Essentially, in essence, what these last kind of few steps are doing are they are accepting all points that we generate which are inside the circle and they're rejecting any points which lie outside of the circle. And so really all this comes down to is that simple case here. So we accept a point if the radial distance of xi and yi is less than r, otherwise we reject. And if we follow this algorithm that allows us to generate uniformly distributed samples within a circular boundary. Whilst I've explained how this process works for this simple example, I now want to illustrate how we can use a similar kind of process to generate uniform samples within a much more complicated object. So now I'm going to draw the boundaries of this distribution and as the function's name suggests, this actually is a cow distribution. It looks like a cow. And what we're going to do now is we're going to try and sample from the distribution which is uniform within the cow's boundaries. 
So how are we going to use rejection sampling to generate independent samples from within the cow's boundary? Well, the idea is that what we can do is we can generate x, y, and z coordinates uniformly between the bounds which I've shown here. And to use rejection sampling, we just accept that sample if the point lies within the cow's boundaries and reject it otherwise. So now illustrating this process in action, on the top here I've shown the total number of points that I've generated. Obviously we're rejecting quite a few of our points, but I'm showing here the accepted points that we generate from our cow distribution as red points in the graph. And you can see that after we've generated somewhere like sort of 10,000 points, our distribution, our, our independent samples, start to trace out a distribution which does look something like a cow. And after we generate further samples, we start to get really into the literal tails of this distribution. There is a tail here, and also into the feet of that distribution, which are the bits that are relatively narrow and hard to generate points from. But after about 30,000 points, we're getting a fairly good representation of the underlying shape of that distribution. So what can we actually use rejection sampling for, from the cow to actually do here? Well, what we can do is we can use the ratio of rejected to accepted samples to help us to work out the integral, which is the volume of the cow. Essentially, all we do is we take the fraction of accepted to total number of points and multiply that by the volume of the bounding box and that gives us an estimate of the volume. So on the left hand side here I'm going to show you in blue the rejected points, in red the accepted points and on the right I'm going to show you our estimate of the volume of the cow, in other words this quite difficult three-dimensional integral to do, as a function of the total number of points which we're generating. So starting off this simulation now we can see that we are starting off with a relatively poor estimate of the volume of the cow because I think that my first point that I generated lie lay outside of the cow's boundaries but after relatively short amounts of time the volume or the estimate of the volume of the cow has converged to a value which is approximately we hope the true volume of the cow. I should say in this example I actually can't analytically determine the volume of the cow, but our Monte Carlo estimate of the volume of the cow has certainly tended to a particular value. So we've seen here that using our rejection samples, we're actually able to calculate an integral, which is in general quite a useful thing to be able to do. What else does this simulation, albeit a bit silly, tell us about rejection sampling? Well, what do we notice? We notice that the majority of points that we're generating in our bonding box are actually rejected. Only relatively few points are accepted and they're shown in red. So rejection sampling is a very wasteful form of generating independent samples and unfortunately the degree of this inefficiency actually grows exponentially with the number of dimensions of our target distribution. So unfortunately if I was talking about sampling from a 10 dimensional or 20 dimensional posterior, then rejection sampling would be entirely inefficient because of the exponential scaling of the inefficiency with the number of dimensions. So whilst rejection sampling can be useful for generating independent samples from a distribution, typically we only use it for univariate cases and typically also as a kind of last resort if there are no other more efficient methods available.